This is Dr. Chima, and today is the last of the three lectures of acid base series. Uh, let's go over quickly for the ABG interpretation steps before we do the clinical cases. Uh, as we said before, step one will be identify one primary disorder. Uh, if it's metabolic or respiratory acidosis or alkalosis. So wherever the main change would be, that would be a primary disorder. Step two, we apply formulas to calculate the expected compensation. In step three, we will calculate A9 gap, no matter what. In step four, we will apply in certain cases uh, in which we calculate either osmolar gap or delta ratio. Uh, then we discussed briefly in the previous presentation, uh, what were the A9 gap or small L gap, urinary A9 gap and delta ratio. But let's do the cases so that we apply all the knowledge we learned so far. So case number one, I already discussed in the previous lecture, a 40 year old patient admitted with shallow rapid respiration. His serum chemistries are the following arterial blood gases base. So step one would be, we look at uh, the pH, acidemia, and then bicarbonate of 12 favors that. So metabolic acidosis. Uh, and then we calculate the compensation using the formula from the compensation. And it comes out to be PCO2 should be 26. And actually patient's PCO2 is 26. So it's an appropriate compensation. Then we calculate the A9 gap, sodium minus chloride and bicarbonate. And it comes out to be 30. So it would be a compensated high A and gap metabolic acidosis, and it's a simple acid base disorder. So let's go to the next case. A 24 year old patient admitted with weakness, sodium 140, potassium 1.8, maybe the cause of weakness, chloride 125, um, bicarbonate of six, A and gap is not given, pH is 6.84. So pH is low, acidemia or acidosis. And what favors that? Obviously, bicarb of five favors that. So there is a metabolic acidosis. And then, um, so step one is metabolic acidosis. Step two, we calculate the compensation. Once we calculate the compensation, the PCO2 should be 17, but patient has 30. So something has pushed the PCO2 from 17 to 30. So whatever increases the PCO2 is a respiratory disorder, a respiratory acidosis. And then we calculate the A9 gap also. A9 gap is 9, so it's normal. So your answer would be normal A9 gap metabolic acidosis plus there is a respiratory acidosis because BCO2 should be 17, but it's actually 30. So it's a mixed disorder. Two disorders are going on. Patient has metabolic acidosis. At the same time, maybe because of hypokalemia, weakness, respiratory muscle cannot... Uh, move that fast and patient is retaining PCO2 and that's causing respiratory acidosis. So another case, a patient with grand mal fits, lab test taken immediately showed a pH of 7.14 acidosis, PCO2 of 45, upper normal limit, a bicarb of 17 favors that. So it's a metabolic acidosis, step one. Uh, we said acidosis and we said metabolic. Uh, and then step two, we calculate compensation. PCO2 should be 34 when we apply the formula of compensation, but patient has 45. So same thing, something has pushed the PCO2 from this to this. And whenever it comes to PCO2, it's an acid. So it's acidosis. And whenever it comes to PCO2, it's also a respiratory process. So it's a respiratory acidosis. And then we also calculate the A9 gap and it comes out to be 25. So patient has high A9 gap metabolic acidosis as well as respiratory acidosis. Uh, maybe sudden uh, low perfusion led to lactic acidosis, which caused high A9 gap metabolic acidosis. And since patients uh, sometimes keep on having uh, seizures are status epilepticus, they have difficulty breathing, so they could retain PCO2. That could be the reason for respiratory acidosis. So this is how you even figure out what could have happened clinically. This is the significance and beauty of knowing uh, all these. 
So high NN gaps are going to seizure induced lact lactic acidosis. Let's do another case. A 65 year old man has history of smoking, hypertension, and patient was treated with diuretics. ABG and Rumer showed pH of 7.48. Whenever pH is more than 7.45, it's alkalosis. So it's alkalemia right here. And then you see, does PCO2 of 49 help alkalemia? No, this is acidosis. But bicarb of 36 is alkal alkalosis or alkalemia because anything more than 25 is alkalemia. So there is a metabolic alkalosis. And then we calculate as a compensation what should be the PCO2. So uh, it's a metabolic alkalemia and compensation when we calculate PCO2 should be 48. 48, 49, no difference. It's always plus minus 2. So for example, the answer 47 would be appropriate compensation and 51 would be appropriate compensation. So A9 gap, you can't calculate, you're not given the value. So it's a metabolic alkalosis with appropriate compensation. It's a simple disorder. Uh, diuretics, as we said before, could cause metabolic alkalosis. That could be the reason. A 54-year-old man with COPD has two-day uh, episode of increasing shortness of breath and sputum production. Chest X-ray showed left lower lobe pneumonia. Labs showed uh, ABG showed pH of 7.25, acidosis. PCO2 of 70 helps the acidosis. So it's a respiratory acidosis, not uncommon in COPD. We discuss in our acid waste lecture series number one, in which we discuss the causes. So I said COPD is the most common cause of respiratory acidosis. And then bicarbonate of 30, which indicates alkalosis. Uh, oxygen saturation is kind of low, uh, partial pressure of oxygen. So our primary disorder uh, would be respiratory. And uh, if it would be acute, the bicarbonate should be 27. If it's chronic, it should be 35. Patient's bicarb is 30. So acute compensation is uh, for every 10 uh, increase in PCO2, it goes up one. For chronic, it goes up four. So that's why acute and chronic have different compensation. This patient has two process, COPD chronic and superimposed pneumonia as an acute process. So it's acute and chronic respiratory acidosis basically. Uh, patient was started on oxygen because oxygen was very low, but suddenly pH drops. PCO2 retention increases and bicarbonate stays the same uh, because removal of hypoxic drive led to hypoventilation leading to retention of PCO2 and drop in uh, pH. Since there was not enough time given, uh, so that's why there is no significant change in bicarbonate. In COPD, we try to keep O2 set around 88 to 90%. Another case, a 40-year-old man is admitted with following chemistry, sodium-140, chloride-86, bicarb-40, potassium-3, glucose-120, 132, creatinine-1.4. ABG showed pH of 7.52, which is alkalemia. ECO2 of 51 does not help alkalemia. Bicarb of 40 does help, so it's a metabolic alkalemia. Uh, so it's basically, and if you if you calculate the compensation, it comes out to be 51. So your diagnosis is basically metabolic alkalosis with appropriate compensation. It's a simple disorder. But question arises, what could be the reason? We don't know. Any of these uh, reasons we discussed before for the metabolic alkalosis could be there. This patient could be on diuretic, could have volume depletion, could have underlying hyperaldosteronism. So this would help you that there is some, since there is a metabolic alkalosis, you will be looking for one of these conditions. That's the beauty. Many times based on the metabolic alkalosis, we diagnose patient with primary hyperaldosteronism. Many times it's volume depletion and contraction alkalosis. Say a patient come to you and you are unable to assess the volume status, but bicarbonate is 35 without any other obvious reason. That could be just contraction alkalosis giving you metabolic alkalosis. So gentleman water syndrome could be the underlying etiology. So basically you treat the underlying cause, you need to know it. Let's do another case. A very common DK patient comes in with low P, uh, pH. We know diabetic ketoacidosis, so there is acidosis. Bicarb is six, so it's a metabolic acidosis since it's related to kidney, not to the lungs. 
then you look at uh, the ANN gap is already given 32. So there is a high ANN gap metabolic acidosis. In mud pile, this is the D. In the mud, D is diabetic ketoacidosis. One of the causes of high ANN gap metabolic acidosis. So there is a severe metabolic acidosis. Uh, the PCO2 should be 17, but it's 28. So someone is pushing this, indicating respiratory acidosis. Maybe patient is breathing fast for many days, and that led to respiratory muscle fatigue. A9 gap is 32. So it's a mixed disorder, uh, metabolic acidosis with high A9 gap, as well as respiratory acidosis. Because the thing is, uh, you can't keep PCO2 10 to 12 forever without tiring out. After a certain time, your respiratory muscle fatigued out, tired. So they could start retaining PCO2. So if patient is in DK, not treated because of severe acidosis and the response hyperventilating for so many days, what can you do? Patient will eventually tire out and start retaining PCO2 and develop respiratory acidosis. A uh, shortness of breath for two weeks, PA 7.3, PCO2 70, BICA 40, ANN gap 12, respiratory acidosis uh, by history seems chronic, two weeks. Uh, pH is normal, but PCO2 is high, so you could label it as a respiratory acidosis. Bicarb is 40. Uh, step 3, uh, step 2, bicarbonate is 35, but patient has 40, so there is a, a metabolic alkalosis present too, because it should be 35, it's 40. Uh, NN gap is normal, so chronic respiratory acidosis and metabolic alkalosis is present. Maybe someone has given this patient diuretics for shortness of breath. Uh, so two separate disorders are present. So this case, when the pH was normal, you could either start here or start here. The answer would be the same. You could say patient has metabolic alkalosis, then calculate the compensation and say patient has a respiratory acidosis too. It would be the same thing. Uh, just to go over uh, a smaller gap and delta ratio, Delta ratio is calculated to rule out any hidden metabolic disorder and osmolar gap for any intoxication because next cases are related to that. So someone with recurrent episodes of small bowel obstruction presents with abdominal pain, vomiting, and these are the blood gases. Urine dipstick uh, negative for ketones, blood pressure is low, heart rate is high. Step one, metabolic acidosis, no brainer. Step two, PCO2 should be 35. It is 35, so it's compensated metabolic acidosis with high ANN gap. But let's apply step four here to, to see if there is any hidden disorder. So in ANN gap metabolic acidosis, uh, what is the increase in ANN gap of 21? Um, so the ANN gap normal is 12. So patient has 33, so 21 increase. So bicarbonate should decrease by 21. If we decrease bicarbonate by 21, it, come, it should be six, but patient's bicarbonate is 18. So something is pushing bicarbonate from six to 18. And that is a hidden metabolic alkalosis. And uh, if we apply this uh, ratio in this case, so the change in A9 gap and change in uh, Change in, change in ANN gap versus change in bicarbonate, the answer is 3.5. And whenever it's more than two, it's metabolic alkalosis. Whenever it's less than one, there is a hidden normal ANN gap acidosis. This is very important for postgraduate students, for USMLE students. In order to diagnose a third hidden metabolic disorder, you need to know change in ANN gap and change in bicarbonate. The delta ratio should be one to two. More than two alkalosis, less than one normal ANN gap acidosis. So the, the patient could have high in gap acidosis and normal in gap acidosis, but our patient has high in gap acidosis and metabolic alkalosis. Uh, 